Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. If you have a smaller saw like this and you've ever wondered if it'd be worth getting an Alaskan mill set up for to mill some smaller stuff around your property, well we are talking about just that thing today. Or if you're just interested in Alaskan mills in general, we are going over all the way from the unboxing to a little top rail system I made, all the way through milling logs, some smaller logs for the first time. We'll definitely go over some mistakes I made and a few things I learned in that process. We're also going to go over a new tool that an awesome, awesome subscriber sent us. So be sure to stay tuned. We've got a great one for you today. So I picked up this Alaskan mill off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. But there are lots of brands and manufacturers of Alaskan mills. And most of them are really pretty similar. I just picked one that I knew would fit the saw I have now and could expand to the saw that I want to get in the future. So that's why we ended up going with this size. So we kind of got all the pieces sitting out here. Did come with these sweet gloves. Let's see if they actually... Yeah, that's nice. Okay, all right. Kids are gonna love those. It did come with some sort of instructions. They're not too bad. Not the worst instructions I've ever seen. And some hardware and a wrench. All right, see if we can figure this out. So this is not really a uh, this is not really an instructional video, but uh, you see I got everything sitting out here. We've got some kind of half-butted instructions here. And uh, I'm just going to time-lapse the assembly, and then we'll talk about it once we get it all put together here. All right, so we got this thing all put together, at least uh, assembled in the order it needs to be in anyway. Now, when I order this, this is adjustable in bar size. The saw head goes on this side of the power head. And then this, this is where your adjustment for length's at. You just loosen those bolts. And it, it did come with its own wrench, which works on there. Um, but that's the same size, standard size anyway. It's not some weird uh, Chinese size. It does work with the saw wrench that I have. So this is your adjustment anyway. You just loosen these up with the wrench on both sides and it slides down this channel and that clamps into, into the bar. Now I'll show that in a little bit more detail whenever we actually start milling, but it does have, see if they can get that to show up on camera, it does have increments, measurements there. Quarter scale looks like. Fancy handy dandy handle and uh, I don't know, everything you'd expect for a cheap little Alaskan mill. I got an adjustable Alaskan mill because I knew, you know, depending on what chainsaw I had at the time, I wanted it to be adjustable for the small saw I have now, which is a very itty bitty Husqvarna 440E Lowe's special. But remember, we do have the coffee can fund going from firewood sales to get a bigger saw. You see that section on the left is pretty rotten, so I'm just gonna kind of cut that off and ignore it, but I'm gonna mark out two eight inch sections on the right there where the wood's still pretty good. I kind of went with eight inches, uh, one that's just kind of what it measured out to to get two pieces, and I thought that might be a decent size without overworking the saw too much. Okay, so we already found the first major flaw in this operation, which most of you already knew it was gonna be an issue, and I knew it was gonna be an issue, which is why I started kind of selling some of that cedar firewood to try to save up for a bigger saw, but if you remember, camera broke, had to use the saw money for a new camera so we could keep making these videos, but I was so anxious to try out this Alaskan mill, I thought, let's try it out on this little red oak round. We'll make a few sections and mill some really small pieces out of it, but just from this cut, this cut, this cut, this saw, it's a little 440E Lowe's homeowner special, already started getting a little too hot. Now, if you don't know, 
milling is really really hard on chainsaws they're just not meant to be ran wide open or three quarters to wide open whatever for that length of time they get really hot so that's why you kind of need a bigger saw that can kind of take i'm not going to call it abuse but you guys know what i mean some heavy usage not only did it get hot on us but this is from the first cut the first rip whatever you want to call it okay and this is from the last one and you can see the sizes uh the shavings significantly decreased which means the saw got pretty dull pretty daggone quick now just so you kind of know what the game plan is here we ran from that side then we'll come from this side and finish these off like so and the only reason we're doing it that way is just because of the size of the piece we are trying to mill and once we get these cut all the way through we'll get it set up where we can try to mill some planks out of it like that now I went over, mowed some grass, let the saw cool down a little bit. I haven't fired it up yet. Um, we'll do that in just a minute here, but because it is insanely dull from that, we have a new sharpener that an awesome subscriber named Peter sent us. So everybody say thanks, Peter. Uh, he saw the Chicago electric sharpener I got. He said, get rid of that thing, use this. I've used it forever and it's worked well for me. So he sent us one to try out. He doesn't sell these things. He's just um, an awesome person who wanted to help a guy out and I can't thank him enough for it. Let's talk about what he sent. So Peter sent us a 12 volt Oregon electric chainsaw sharpener. He says this is what he uses. This is what he swears by. Bring it out of the package. Comes with a little gauge. Has a guide on it to help with your angles. Has three different angles on there. Comes with these to attach to the battery. It's 12 volt and has a cigarette lighter on the end and that plugs in to the cigarette lighter. So I guess if what you have has a cigarette lighter, you can just plug that straight into it. But if it doesn't, you've got the little battery adapter option. That's pretty sweet. Came with, um, looks like a couple different collets there maybe. I guess those might wear out over time. And then uh, several different size stones. Now I will run the, 3 16 which I'm not sure which one of those will be. I'll have to uh, have to see if it says it on there somewhere. I'm guessing the 3 16 is probably that one. But uh, let's get this thing set up and run it over the saw real quick and see how it does. I think it's going to do really well. All right. So, just run the bit in there like that. Probably have to loosen that up, don't we? Yeah, probably. Has a little wrench that came with it here. Guessing that goes on there like so. Sure does. Loosens up. Just like any other rotary tool you've ever used, router or Dremel or whatever, just has a little collet in there. And it's got a little lock right there. You just push that down. Snug it up. I don't know how snug it has to be, but I'm assuming not too crazy. All right, let's get this hooked up and uh, see how it does. I guess we ought to test it real quick just to make sure that it actually works. All right. So that took um, about 10 minutes, wasn't too bad at all. Probably a little quicker than hand filing, about the same amount of time if you had it on the Chicago electric sharpener, but the chain is still on the bar, so you don't have to mess with that aspect. So that is kind of nice. One thing I wasn't doing at the beginning that I started doing at the end is this guide right here, this plate, you see me waving it around. I'd start setting that on the tooth towards the end, and that uh, kind of got me up into the uh, goal of the tooth a little bit better when I was running it back and forth like that uh, one thing i may do in the future because i made it all the way around the other direction and was looking at the wrong line i wasn't paying attention i may take like a paint pen 
and maybe uh, color in the lines that I use, the angle that I use on this saw to help me keep from getting confused with the other uh, other angles that are marked on there. But other than that, pretty simple, pretty happy with it. The real test, we'll get it in that wood and we'll kind of see what the shavings look like, you know what I mean? Now, let's be clear. If you look at this chain, you're like, that's not a very sharp chain or I don't like the way that chain looks. I guarantee you, it's not the sharpener's fault, it's the user's fault. So keep that in mind. Anywho, let's fire it up. <laughs> All right, so I definitely have some opinions about that sharpener and the way it performed. But first, let's look at what we got out of this little uh, little round we have, little red oak round. So we ended up with those two pieces, which we'll try to mill. This was a piece of off-fall. It'll just get cut and split and used for firewood or whatever. This end piece, even though it's got some good thickness to it, it's just full of nothing but rot. So I'm not even going to try to get anything out of it. Probably just cut and split for firewood as well. But these are about 7 inches across. And this is also 7 inches across. And they're about 30 inches lengthways now they got some of this random stuff in them so it's all said and done we'll probably cut them down to 24 inch pieces so we'll probably end up with 24 inch long one by six pieces um of this red oak that we can put down for hobby wood in the wood shop now i know a lot of you're thinking that's a lot of work for some little bitty hobby wood mike and you're absolutely right but keep in mind we're kind of trying to do a little bit of the learning curve on this alaskan mill before we get to big well, I don't say big, but bigger valuable timber. So using small stuff that would probably just be left in the woods and wasted anyway, and getting a little bit out of it for the wood shop, and knocking out some of that learning curve for the mill and how we want to mill the stuff up. I don't know. I'm going to call it not a waste of time. Plus, that was my first time ever opening a log like that. Felt pretty down on good. Felt pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about it. Speaking of pretty exciting, this is from Cut One shavings cut one on this side not that side the side we just did and this is a mix of cut two and three now that chicago electric sharpener does a great job if your chain is off the bar if you have multiple chains and you have a good place to set it up i'm still happy with that chicago electric sharpener however the fact i can take this little organ 12 volt sharpener anywhere I want with me, wherever I've got 12 volt power, which is pretty common if you're out in the woods with a tractor or something like that. It maintained the angle when I was sharpening really well. Once I get some little paint marks on those angle references on the guide, I don't think I'll have any problem maintaining angle with it. It was quick, it was effective, and it was kind of fun. I mean, my three favorite things with any tool. So Peter told me this would become my new favorite sharpener and I have to say, I think Peter's right. I'm pretty happy with it, pretty happy with the performance. Now we get to do the long-term test and see how she holds up, but uh, 
she definitely did good today. Next, we're gonna do a top rail, get the saw on the mill. Some of you guys have already done this, so you get to sit back and have a few chuckles at me as I struggle with it. Some of you guys have not, so we get to learn together. Anyway, that's the next step, let's get to it. Let's talk about something real quick. There are lots of things out there you can buy. Lots of manufacturers that make awesome products. But here's the deal, when you got material laying around and you're kind of picky and you wanna make something yourself, well, that's exactly what you do. Is this gonna work perfect? No, absolutely not. In fact, if you were paying attention, we already made one change to it while making this video. But that's my favorite part of building something, the trial and error part. What works, what doesn't. That way, and I will want to scale this up in the future, and I go pick up some aluminum stock to do so, I've got all the bugs, most of the bugs kind of worked out so we're not wasting material. So we're gonna get using this, we're gonna see what we like, what we don't like. Now let's take a little closer look at it here. We have this top rail section that's about eight feet long and that rides nice across the top. The idea is, keep in mind, again, that's a little 440 Lowe's special Husqvarna chainsaw, so we're milling smaller material. Now, it is kind of difficult to set up a top rail on smaller material, so having it separate from the material makes that a little bit easier. Now, we do have some one, two, three, four different height adjustments for the get it in the ballpark range adjustment. And then, of course, the mill itself. I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up on camera, but each one of these has a height adjustment as well. So these adjustments are the get it in the ballpark. These are kind of the fine-tuned adjustments. We've got these bolts here that slide on through to wherever we need to set it. And I went with that size because that's what fits, oops, maybe my chainsaw wrench. Okay, and then wing nuts on that side. That's what we went with. Like I said, is it perfect? Nah, this is just something I threw together. Like, wonder if that'll work. And that's what we're getting ready to find out. So talking about learning curves here, one major learning curve was adjusting the height on this thing. There is definitely a specific order that you need to loosen and unloosen these things in. And I'm honestly not sure I've figured it out yet. Every time you move something, something else moves. It's just kind of playing around with it and seeing where it goes. I will say that throughout the day, I noticed it took me less and less time to get it adjusted as you just kind of become familiar with it. Now, this is my first ever attempted cut with an Alaskan mill and it was a pretty big learning curve. So a couple things I would have changed here. I wish I would have lowered that top rail to the next setting a little bit further down so it would have been closer to the log. I wish I would have taken the time to scoot that log over to where it would sit evenly on the power head guide there so it wouldn't do what you just saw it do, bouncing around. Now, I will make some adjustments here 
uh, on the next cut to address those things. One thing I did do, you can see I kind of started running an angle so the power head would actually make contact with it. That kept it from moving around so much. But aside from that, I added a wedge under one side to stabilize it a little bit and added a couple more screws to keep it from twisting. But like I said, this is a learning experience. I'm gonna make mistakes and I would rather make them on these smaller pieces of wood than uh, something that might actually hold some value. So we're going to uh, take this top rail off with just removing those two bolts, slide it out of the way make some adjustments on the Alaskan mill to lower it so we can actually start making a couple little, and I'm going to say slabs, but I think you guys know what I mean, a couple little pieces of timber just to experiment with it and see how it goes. So I'm sure you guys can hear it bind up just a little bit here in uh, in just a second. And uh, this was what I was most concerned about, is how to actually start the cut and come in level with the mill. Because when you first start, you only have one of those guide bars on the log. Now, the one thing uh, going back and looking as I was editing was, well, I need to keep my power head in contact with the log. That would definitely help me keep it more stable. But this is where I'm gonna turn to you guys. If anybody here has Alaskan mills and uses them, what are your tips and tricks to actually coming into the log and starting the cut? Leave that in the comments for me, if you would, please. Okay, so let's talk about a couple things about this mill. Now, the first day I was a little bit discouraged. In fact, I had already made a little bit of an outro video and I kind of had these thoughts to say. Knowing that I anticipate buying a bigger saw for this mill in the future, this will be the last time you see this Alaskan mill set up until I get that bigger saw. But after going through and editing that video, and I've said this before and I'll say it time and time again, one of the coolest things about having a YouTube channel is going through, you film what you make, you film what you do, and when you go through and edit it, you catch little things. You're like, wait a second, I need to go back and try that. And I'm sure some of you caught this. He better sharpen that chain up. I better tell him his chain's dull. Caps lock. Another thing I caught, let me show you, it's on this mill. So the chain sharpening issue, I think I've addressed a little bit anyway. I ran the Oregon 12 volt sharpener over this again. When I watch other YouTube milling videos, those guys talk about having four or five chains ready to go. And now I fully understand why. We are certainly learning a lot today. But the other thing that was discouraging, aside from the chain being super dull, oh, was the thickness that I had to mill that. And the reason I thought I had to mill that thickness was because the way this hits my brake. See that there? See how it hits that? Now, I had these set at this width because of the top rail I made, and it maxes out the length on my bar. But after going back and looking at the footage and editing it, I thought to myself, Mike, what are you doing? You're not on the top rail. As long as you're narrow enough or wide enough rather to fit on what you're milling, you can bring that in. So we're gonna make that adjustment. We're gonna make them a little thinner, which is what I wanted in the first place for some hobby wood in the basement wood shop. We're gonna run it a couple more times on this. And I just wanna see if I can change my own opinion because I've already kind of formed one on how I feel about little saw, little logs, and is it worth it? So let me try these couple adjustments and see what we get. I do wanna talk about one thing real quick and I would not be surprised if it's already been mentioned in the comments by this point in the video. It's happened in other videos and will definitely happen in future videos. You may have noticed a few wardrobe changes. Well, that's a pretty simple explanation. I didn't have a full day to dedicate to what I was doing here. I was just going over in the evening when I had an extra hour or two. So that's what we ended up with. Uh, if you're looking for a total time frame though on unboxing, putting the mill together, building the top rail, splitting the log, and the milling you've seen in this video, it's about eight hours. Obviously it won't take that long in the future because well the top rail is built, the mill is all put together, and I'm starting to kind of get a feel for this mill. You can see I'm actually getting a little bit comfortable here. This is the position I found to be most comfortable for milling these smaller logs and you'll notice on this one and the next one that my entry cut is starting to get a little smoother. Obviously still looking for your suggestions in the comments on that, but I am starting to get a little bit more comfortable with it. All right, so there's what we, obviously that's the piece we just milled off of. That's a chainsaw, you guys know that. And these are the pieces we ended up with. I just did two of them real quick, just to see if those minor adjustments changed my opinion on small saw, small logs. Get 
a little close up on what we got on this one and on this one. All right. So let me set you up on a tripod and give you a little finish shot here of what I would think. Hi right, guys, little saw, little log. What do we think about it? Well, uh, I can tell you right now, in the beginning, I was a little bit discouraged, but already, just from going through the edits and making the couple changes I did, it went even smoother today. And I have to say, as far as the mill goes, I'm happy with it. There's not a lot to an Alaska mill, so I'm happy with this one. Uh, as far as the top rail goes, I'm really happy with it. We we're definitely in the trial error phase with that, but like I said, I kind of want to get it fabricated up with wood, see how it works. There's already a couple things I want to tweak on it. So once we get that all flattened out and ironed out, we'll scale it up a little bit and probably try to make it out of some aluminum or something like that. So I'm excited about the top rail performance. I'm excited about this now that I've tweaked a few things and learned a couple things just by watching my own edits. And I know I'm going to learn some more because you guys are going to leave some awesome tips and comments in the comment section about your experience with Alaskan sawmills and things you've done to make it go a little smoother. Now, is it worth the time of setting up these little logs and milling them? Monetarily, probably not. Um, even as far as aspect of just getting wood for the shop, just some hobby wood, I mean, maybe, probably. As far as just gaining some experience on the saw so that whenever we get a bigger saw and we get a bigger setup and we start milling things that might actually have some, I'm going to use it loosely, but value, yeah, it's definitely worth ironing out the bugs on smaller stuff like this because if this doesn't work out, hey, it's firewood, right? That's not a big deal. But if one day we come across some really nice logs, and uh, we're going to try to slab it up for a really nice table and that doesn't work out, that's going to be frustrating. So the value is probably in the experience, not in the wood, but I'm going to say overall it's a win and we'll probably keep doing it. So expect a few more videos like this in the future. Not a lot because like I said, I don't want to burn the saw, but it is something that we'll be seeing. So I just hey, had to share saw. this. I thought it was too funny not to share. I found it whenever I was editing the video. We were over at the barn, sharpening the saw, getting ready for the next day of milling. And apparently our youngest figured out how to turn the camera on. Anyway, I hope you guys got a little smile and laugh out of it like I did. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.